Hello everyone and welcome again to Steam Code. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to make Minesweeper in Java. Okay, uh, here's a sample of what we're going to be doing here. So as you can see, we have our program and we have the ability to click on cells. You're going to get these numbers here which show uh, where all the mines are in, in proximity. You can flag each of these, uh, each of these cells here, which means that you can't click on them until you unflag them. And when what happens when you actually click on a mine, we're gonna have that, um, and so it'll show where all the other mines are. Notice also how, in the title part, we have ten mines. It'll tell you how many mines we have, how many flags we have as well. Hold on. Ah, I keep. Getting unlucky with this. Hold on. Okay. Um, so when you make flags, it'll tell you you have. It'll update that. Okay. And we'll get into how to how to do all of this in our tutorial. This is, by the way, uh, this is going to be a multi-part tutorial. Um, if I had mentioned that already, so um, it's only going to be going over how to make this frame, this basic frame, and the main class itself. Okay, I do expect that if you're watching, you do have a basic knowledge of Java because it's not going to be completely in-depth or a completely uh, beginner tutorial. Um, they're going to be slightly more complex characters, but you should be able to follow along. I'll try to explain things as we go. Um, but if there's anything that you don't understand, leave a question in the comments or you can um, or you can ask me myself in the comments. So uh, let's get started here. We're going to create a new Java class. I mean, this is going to be our main class. We're going to call it game. Okay. Um, the first thing we're going to be doing is creating a couple of variables here. Um, the first one is going to be with public static uh, final int. So there's a public static uh, variable, which means that you don't have to create an instance of the class game in order to access this variable and final means that the variable cannot be changed um, anywhere else in the in the code so when I say final int width is equal to 720 pixels that means that now if I go if I go somewhere else in the in the code and I try to change this variable I'm not gonna be able to do it because it's a final int and the convention is that we're gonna create all caps for all final ints is gonna be all caps okay I'm also going to define the height here as well, and that's also going to be 720 pixels. Okay, so it's going to be 720 pixels, which makes it, it's going to be a 720 by 720 uh, J frame. Okay, the next variable we're going to be creating is going to be the grid size. The grid size is basically how many of those uh, individual cells are you gonna see so when I set it to 10 that's going to be a 10 by 10 uh, grid of these squares that you see on the screen here okay the next variable is going to be mine count that's basically as as I'm pretty sure you can guess is how many mines are gonna be on the board here so in this one, we're going to have a 720 by 720 frame, 10 by 10 grid, and 10 mines per game. Okay, let's go ahead and create our constructor, public game, and our main function. Okay, and we're going to just go ahead and call it constructor from here all right um, from here this this will this will pretty much complete our game class um, and let's go in here and create our window which is going to be the actual J frame what we're going to see so create a new class we're going to call it window and in here we're going to also instantiate some variables here so or declare some variables uh, no, what am I doing private private static uh, J frame 
Okay, that's the frame that we're going to actually be looking at. And by the way, if you're getting an error, that's because you haven't imported our um, the actual class here. So you're going to want to import Java X dot swing. And uh, here is star, which means it's going to import every class, including JFrame from the swing library. Um, but if you just if you want to actually just import that one class, you can put in JFrame like that. But I'll leave it as star for right now. And in fact, this kind of auto corrects for me. If you're using a uh, IntelliJ, it should do it automatically for you. Okay. Uh, the next. Is going to be the title. Okay, that's going to be the title of our J frame. And we're going to create a constructor here. So we're going to pass in, we're going to put in, co in constructor uh, the width, the height, the grid size. the title and we're going to pass in the game class as one of our uh, arguments here as well. Okay. Now we're just going to do some upkeep stuff. Uh, we're going to first create our window, uh, the window title, I mean, and we're going to declare this variable um, from what we have in our parameters. So we're going to set that equal to the title. So what that does is it'll say that, what we have here, string title, um, our, our J frame is going to be assigned to what we pass in here uh, in the parameters. Okay. Window. Okay. Uh, the next thing we're going to do here is set the frame. We're going to instantiate a new J frame object. And we're going to pass in that title we just created. We're going to pass it that in uh, here. Okay. We're also going to set our minimum and maximum size, uh, to those width and height variables that we have here. So we're going to go ahead and say frame dot set preferred size. I'm going to create a new dimension. And again, just to let you all know, um, we also import java.awt.star. We're going to import that as well. So if you're getting an, an error, that's because dimension hasn't been imported. The dimension class hasn't been imported into our into our class. So we want to make sure we do that as well. Uh, dimension, we're going to put in the width and the height, uh, which are the variables we created. From here. We're going to copy that twice and we're going to set the minimum and maximum size. Okay. Okay. Set minimum and maximum size to this, uh, these dimensions here. Okay. Uh, we're also going to set our default close operation, which basically is just what happens after you close out of our pro out of our thing. Um, that'll just make sure that everything works properly when we actually close out the J frame. So we're going to call that J frame dot, uh, exit on close. And that should, uh, that should work right there. We're also going to, uh, put in frame dot set location relative to, and put that as null. That'll center our J frame on the screen. Lastly, what we're going to want to do is set frame dot set visible. We can set that to true. Okay. Now, if you run this right now, um, if you go over here and click uh, run game main, uh, you're not going to see anything. And that's because we're not actually calling any, any of the stuff we have here. Okay. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to go back to our game class and we're going to want to say, uh, we're going to want to call in a new window. We're going to instantiate that class we just created. And we're going to pass in all these variables that we have here. So we're going to pass in the width, the height, um, the grid size, 
Uh, we're gonna put in for right now. We're just gonna say minesweeper, minesweeper, and we're gonna put in this as another argument in the parameters. Um, and that should be all that we need to do. Now, if we click run here, we should end up getting a 720 by 720 uh, J frame with minesweeper as the title, and it should it should have uh, started over here in the middle of the screen. If you didn't use that uh if you didn't put this in here what you would have gotten was something that showed up over here in the top left corner which we don't want we want it to be over here in the center of the screen so um that'll be it let's just run down what we did here we created a, a, a game class which is our main class what happens here is we in our main uh, method we called our game constructor which created a new window or created a new instance of our window class, which just ran this code here, which set our uh, the size of our grid and some other uh, the title and some other specifics here. Um, that'll be all for what we do here. In our next video, we're gonna create our cells, which are these buttons that you see here. We're gonna create that and maybe get into some another class uh, in terms of what happens when we actually click on these cells here. Uh, until then, um, thank you for watching. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments. I'll be glad to listen to them. And uh, until then, uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.